Hey everybody, Nam here, and today we're going to be talking about magic with Star Trek CCG. So let's see, we're going to be continuing on in our discussion of the tricks that I put together using Star Trek CCG cards. And uh, today we're going to be talking about the trick that I entitled Apex Erosion. There's not much to preface, so let's just get right to it. Hi everybody, Nam here, and today we're going to be doing magic with Star Trek CCG. So what I've got here today is three different personnel. It is a Borg, a Vidian, and a Kazon. And first things first, we're going to try and get them lost in the deck. But you may have noticed that there is a theme in which they are actually all Delta Quadrant species. Okay. And the thing is, they are actually just, you know, sitting around and in minding their own business in the Delta Quadrant. But if you did not know, there is a culture that is basically extreme hunters called the Herogen. And that's what these cards are over here. And the Herogen are great at hunting prey, and they will basically hunt whatever prey they deem to be worthy and um, worthwhile prey. Okay, I will admit, I could have used a little bit of improvement on the patter here. <laughs> I feel like this might have been one of those nights in which I was rushed and trying to record the trick just so I could get it up and ready and out the door for the next day. So you hit the one video per day. But uh, now ever since having a baby, I don't feel such pressure anymore. So, you know, whatever, not a big deal. Um, first of all, I had the pile sitting on the table separately first. Missed a perfectly good opportunity to draw attention to it so that I could engage the viewer as we discussed in the last video. So these particular um, Herogen are going to try and hunt down all of our prey in the Delta Quadrant. So here's the first Herogen, and we're basically going to notice that he is basically gone hunting for the first prey. And now the second one, once again, we'll do a similar thing. Snap our fingers and is also going to go hunting. And this one also going to go hunting. And now this last one, believe it or not, is going to disappear and start to go hunting before your very eyes. Okay, so first things first, uh, after each of the Herosian go hunting. I don't know if you were watching what I was watching. Considering I know how it's done, I am feeling very cringy over here because I was like, oh my god! Oh, oh. So I don't remember this being as bad as I, as me choosing this particular take, but I was like, oh man, totally could have done a lot better. Uh, definitely could use improvement here. I think the fact that these are Star Trek CCG cards probably hurt the performance. If it was a regular deck of playing cards, that's what I'm used to doing this trick with. So anyway, now that you're here and there, let's proceed. So now we have our four Herogen Hunters trying to find all of our pieces of prey. But if you notice, they're not on the top and they're not on the bottom. But if we actually grab the whole deck and we fan it out, you're going to notice that there's four cards that are actually just slightly different than the rest. And All right, I know this is going to annoy some people, so I will apologize ahead of time. I'm sorry. I did say fan these out, and uh, people who are into cards, this is a spread, so we're spreading them on the table. Uh, a fan is usually one where you have the cards like fanned out, and you usually keep it in your hand. Uh, this is a spread. But anyway, just calling it out because uh, I want you to know I was aware, but I left it in anyway, so whatever. If I remove the rest of them around them, we're going to see that all of the face-up cards are actually all of our Herosian Hunters, and there happen to be three face-down cards in between all of them. Well, sorry, one card in between each of them, but a total of three. And if we actually pull all of those out right now, and reveal they did indeed get our Borg, our Vidian, and our Kazon. 
Now you might be wondering, oh, this is a CCG, I probably have duplicates and things in the deck. Well, I can assure you that these are all 100% unique in the deck, because the deck is not a real deck. It is simply a ton of different Delta Quadrant locations. So the Herogen searched far and wide through the entire Delta Quadrant to find their perfect prey. And that is that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. All right, so that was the trick that I entitled Apex Herogen. And uh, so let me just say, I think I did a pretty good job on that fourth Herosian. Um, that was wonderful. I don't think I saw what was going on and anyone knew what was going on. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then like the, the, the cleanup and, and like how I placed it on the table, I think covered everything up. So awesome. The other disappearances, the first three Herogen, I was very cringy on. I was like, oh God, <laughs> it felt pretty bad. Um, this trick is a trick that I originally learned as uh, Apex Aces. And uh, I forgot exactly, I don't even know if I know exactly where the real history of this trick came from, but I definitely learned it from some online source. I'm hoping it was a reputable magic person, but I, I don't know for sure right now and I can't recall. Apex Aces, so normally you would actually have the four Aces set out aside. I actually had them be Herogen. And uh, normally, using a regular deck of playing cards, you could have three selections chosen by audience. And uh, it could be three different audience members, could be the same person, whatever. Uh, usually, to make it less suspicious, you want it to be three different. But um, And then you lose them in the deck. You put them in three different places in the deck. You shuffle up the deck. And uh, I will confess, I have to practice on my false shuffles. So. Full disclosure, I don't know if this was a secret the entire time. There was controlling going on. So uh, obviously I knew where all those cards were uh, at any given time. Um, but so that is basically the performance for Apex Aces. Now I replaced the three selections with just other personnel and and as I did call out at the end of the video, I didn't want anybody to think that I use duplicates because in collectible card games, there are usually like, especially for common cards, there are you know, potentially multiples in a, in a regular deck of Star Trek CCG deck. But in this particular case, I wanted to show that they were unique and they really were. And there was only one of each of those Herosian and one of each of those personnel. And the rest of the deck really were, and I, I did make sure they were legitimately Delta Quadrant systems. They weren't just systems that I just said were Delta Quadrant. They really were Delta Quadrant systems. So I wanted that piece to be accurate. So if you really care about accuracy there, um, it also helped with the, with the end of the story where I was like, oh yeah, Herogen search far and wide in the Delta Quadrant for their prey. And I was like, okay, happy with that. So I definitely think there could have been some improvement here. I don't think this was probably one of my better performances, but overall, I think it was like a fine performance. And honestly, part of me starting to do this was trying to think about ways of getting the tricks to do them and come up with like patterns. So I'm starting to come up with like different kinds of presentations for the same trick. And so even if somebody has seen me perform the same trick several times, if I present it differently, it might be just as entertaining, might even be more entertaining, just because there's that little piece of difference. And also, if people see the same trick twice, I mean, a lot of people who don't know how some of the tricks work, love seeing them more than once, because they're like, "Ooh, I want to try and figure it out. Like, a lot of people have that attitude still. I don't know if we've ever talked about this a little bit, but the, the there's types of terminology that people will use um, while well, trying to learn magic, right? So the the trick in and of itself, uh, we don't really use the word trick that often unless we're referring to just kind of like the whole thing or referring to like an entire performance basically, right? But normally we'll use like the word effect, I think to just be like, okay, this is the magical thing that happens in this trick, in this performance, right? And then we'll say like, okay, here's the, uh, here's the method. And so this is, the method is usually the way that you achieve the magical effect in a trick. 
Um, and then things like patter, right? Patter is the word that you use to describe, you know, the words that you will say during the presentation. Uh, whether or not they are truthful or not, that is to be seen, but they are usually words that you will say and associate with the trick so that it's more entertaining. Um, and if nothing else, like I sometimes use it as like a, a piece of education, right? Like, ah, well, this is an interesting blah, blah, blah tidbit about this. And then, you know, so that's always fun. Um, there's more. I, I don't remember everything off of the top of my head, actually, because I had a baby and was not really doing magic for a little bit. I'm a little rusty on the magic. I don't remember everything um, uh, quite as strongly, but uh, still interested, still want to wrap up this project. And um, there's a couple other magic videos that I want to make and uh, we'll get to those another time. But anyway, that's all I've got for now. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. You have a glorious day. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoy it. <laughs>